Okay, we're back. Um, the first section I'm going to go over is actually making the jelly prints. Now, I have a bunch of videos on my channel on YouTube, which is Patty Parish, Patty with an I, Parish with two R's. You can, if you're not familiar with YouTube, you can go to the search box at the top of the YouTube page and put in my name, Patty Parish. And among other listings, you'll see my channel come up and you can go to my channel and click on the videos tab and see all my videos. I think, I don't know, there's maybe a hundred out there now. Uh, but towards the beginning of my series, uh, you'll see a lot of jelly print uh, videos. So if you need any further um, information or techniques, you might want to check there. So I'm going to try to do this kind of quick and dirty, uh, just as a shorter uh, tutorial. So um, I like to use, uh, have at least five or six colors out. When I jelly print, I might have 20 colors out because that's what I do. Um, and as well as black and white, because that'll give you some, some nice mixes. Um, so let's just start by throwing some color down on here. And I dab it right on my plate. And there are some people that put it on the paint palette or other paper and brayer it from there and put it on. I just put it right on my plate. Again, with the teal and purple. Yeah, it's kind of my default color palette, I guess. I love it. And put a little bit of paint down there. And you'll see me using a little bit more paint than uh, some artists will. And I do that intentionally. Sometimes I do it non-intentionally, but I always do it. Um, and look at the cool stuff on my brayer. I don't know how that happened exactly. I must have been putting paint on a rubber stamp. Anyway, squirrel. Let's get to it. So let's going to roll out the paint on my jelly plate. Let it mix as it will. I don't want to mix it too much because I don't want it to become a, just a third different solid color. I want a little texture in there. And I brayer off on a a side piece of cardstock just to clean my brayer and I put my brayer upside down and then I pick a stencil oh look a Patty Tally Paris stencil called Orbits hmm, available at iStencils.com shameless plug over and I made these stencils by the way to fit precisely on an 8x10 jelly plate so a lot of stencils you see are 12 by 12s and they're great you can certainly use them on here and I do all the time but mine since I'm a jelly plate fiend I thought I'd make them to fit exactly on the jelly plate. So if you line it up right, you'll get full coverage. Piece of your card stock over the stencil. And now you want to rub, push that paint, uh, which you want to try to visualize is pushing the paper through the holes of the stencil so that it touches the paint and pulls off a clean image. If you just kind of go like this and like this, you're going to get a very splotchy print. And that may be the look you're going for. But I figure if I'm going to use a stencil, I like that design. I want that design to show on my paper as best as and clean as possible. So I give it a pretty good version around there. And this has a pretty wide open uh, design in it. If it's got a tinier, more fine design, like something like this would, you need to really get in there and push your finger so the paint squeezes between each one of those little holes of the design. But I'm going to assume this is good enough for demonstration purposes. Pull my first print, and there you go. And see how the purple and the teal is kind of mixed up in there. Nice, nice. This is going to dry pretty quickly. I'm going to throw it on the side. And now I'm going to pull a ghost print with what's left through the holes of the stencil on another piece of paper. And on this one, I'm going to push extra hard and get that old thumb knuckle in there to push that paper down in the holes best I can and pull up, pull up whatever dry paint or drying paint might be there. And I should get a shadowy, lighter print resembling the first print, and I did. So that doesn't look like much, but remember, this isn't going to be a framed piece of art. This is going to be a page in a journal that you're going to use as a jump start to start with collaging over part of this design or gessoing over part of it or adding more paint over it or whatever you want to do. Um, so each one... You're not looking for perfection to frame it. It's just a background uh, is what you're looking for. Of course, some of them turn out pretty cool, so you might want to frame those. Just saying. So now I have the jelly plate is clean where the design is through the stencils. But what I'm going to do now is pick up the reverse print of all the paint that's still behind the stencil itself. So I'm going to do a, what I call a sandwich print. 
Um, and this is how I clean my stencils. So I lay this down, see all this? Yum! I feel, and I also take hold the paper like this and feel with my fingers where that plate is so I can kind of get an idea of where to center it on the page. Press that down. And now I'm going to take the wet side of the stencil and lay that down on this side. Rub it with your hands. Now you got to be careful in the, st the stencil itself. Some of the designs, some, pardon me, some of the designs that have corners or fine ends, you can, if you're not careful, pull those up and bend them. You can bend them back into place, but if you do that a thousand times, not going to guarantee it's not going to snap off. So, a little pressure here. And this is as much as I clean my stencils. This is all they get. But that pulls off that much paint that was wet on the stencil. Stencil's dry. I can put that right back in the drawer and there's going to be no problem with that stencil. And then pull off the print and I get the reverse of this, which is also kind of cool. So for that one uh, brayering of paint on the plate, um, and I told you I put a little bit extra paint on it, this is why. I got one first print, ghost print, sandwich print. So I got basically four pages covered with one brayer pass. So now I'm going to do another uh, layer of colors here. What do I want to do? Oh, let's do something a little bit lighter and let's throw in a little, a little of this PBO color that I really like. This one? Yeah, what the heck. So I use these a lot and they really make uh, a a jelly print pop when you get that little bit mixed in with your regular acrylic paint and these are by PBO Studio Acrylics and they are the Dyna colors and this one happens to be green yellow where's my there we go and it's green paint with yellow iridescent and there's about nine different colors that are mixes like that really give it a nice shimmer and I'll show you that in a minute mix a little bit of that in with my blue Maybe a tad more blue on, oh, maybe this one. What did I have? Good Lord. Let's put a little bit of this darker turquoise in there too. I don't want the PBO to overpower what I'm doing. So mix those in. Again, not over mixing. I don't want to have a third color. I want to see all that texture. Clean the, whoops. Clean the brayer upside down. Let's grab another stencil. Oh look, it's another Patty Parish stencil. Hmm, how did that happen? So I'm going to grab some of my previous prints because I want to do both sides of this paper so they're pages. When we fold them in the journal, they're going to look like this. So I want this page printed and this page printed, right? So let's print the back of this one on here. So the paint's pretty wet on this first pass because, again, I put that little bit of extra on there. But in these fine lines up here, you want to really kind of get a good amount of pressure in the direction of those lines if you can kind of remember where they are or feel where they are. And pull that. Now you can see that little bit of PBO shimmering there. You can't hate that, people. You just can't hate it. And this is a really cool stencil, too, for journaling, because when you fold this into a page, you kind of got little journaling little lines there, if you're reading me. So that's in the back of this one, all right? Still got more I can pull up here. I'm going to go over this, because this is like, that's not much to write home about there, although instant journaling bubbles. See what I mean? It just kind of gets going where you just, every page will give you an idea for that kind of stuff. So we go back in here, really pushing again. All right, let's see what we get on that one. And another ghost over that uh, clean up side of the pickup, but that made it even more interesting with those little pops coming through there. And time for another sandwich. So we clean this up. We got this whole print, which is the positive image of the stencil to pick up. Wet side down.
You don't have to give a ton of exact pressure. You just want to make sure you put pressure in the whole plate for this one. Because you're just cleaning off the stencil, which you got that, so that's kind of cool. And pulling up the other opposite image. So now you have that. And see what I mean about the instant journaling spots on this one? Ooh, shimmer, shimmer, PBO. I love you. So there. So that's how we're going to pull our prints. And you are going to need um, 15 double-sided prints, however many times you want to go over them and reprint them, you know, is, is, is up to you. Um, and you're going to need one single-sided print. Actually, it can be another double-sided print, but you're only going to use one side of it because that's going to be the liner on the inside of your book. So here's the inside cover. This is actually a jelly print that I just did one-sided and taped inside the cover. So you can see the front and the back of that. Right? So you're going to need 15. We're going to need three signatures of five each folded in half. That's 15 doubles, one single. And, oh, I wanted to show you one other thing. Let me set this aside. If you want to use uh, found objects and stamps to do a jelly print, do not fear. Let's show you how to do a little bit of that. Let's throw a little bit of this in. A little bit of this. Maybe a little pop of this PBO again. I like this stuff. This is kind of a dickening. Put that little shimmer in there. Mm -mm -mm. Okay. Hey, look at you, yummy colors. Clean off the brayer, flip it over, and now you can do things like use one of these little combs and just comb through, make all kind of swirly poo designs like that. You can take a stamp, and here what you're doing is subtracting the paint from the plate. The stamp impression is going to pull paint off and leave a design. Then you can use this to stamp on whatever. I'm just going to put it on my under paper. And you can just go around the plate and pop stamp, pop stamp, removing the paint and giving you a stamped image on something else. Oops, drop the paint, make a schmutz. That's okay. You can take something like this with your cardboard, car corrugated cardboard. Oh, well, that's not painted up too much. And put some lines in there for more texture. Whatever you want to do. Grab a piece of paper. And on this one, I'm going to do a light touch on this. I'm n I don't have the stencil between the paper and the paint this time, but I have to try to encourage the paper to go through those holes and touch the paint. I just have the paint laying here on the page, and where I drug this comb through it, where it moved paint, it made ridges in between those teeth. So those ridges are kind of high now, and if I push real hard, I'm going to flatten them back down and lose the detail of that design. So with a real light, just the weight of your hand, back and forth on here, on the whole page, pull the print, and now you can see all that, all that texture in there. And see where you can see the swirls of the comb pretty clearly. If I would have really pushed on that and smushed down those ridges, that would have, uh, it would have been a lot less that you would have seen in there. So let's Let's grab another piece here. Look how happy my under paper looks now. <laughs> and some people for this like to use their brayer. If you don't like to use your hands, and it doesn't matter if you schmutz up the back because that people is texture. There we go. Clean that up. And that's even cooler. I like the ghost prints sometimes better than the first prints. So here's the first one. Right, here's the ghost, little love. So, uh, if you want to kind of finish up your prints a little bit more than just having like this plain print here, uh, let's do it on one of these too. Okay, we'll do my little pop of black. So, I just put some black paint down on the plate. Brayer that on. 
for some reason, black paint is the easiest to brayer on, and I don't know why. It doesn't matter the brand or the formula. It just kind of is. Putting the brayer. And now let's look for, I'm going to look for a um, little finer pattern. Let's, look, let's go for this one. This one's simple. And I'm going to put this on. And show you what this adds to just, okay, so here's a good one to do it to. There's two layers on there. There, you know, you see the cleanup of the one, the first teal and purple one. This one with the ridges, kind of splotchy. Doesn't look like much there. But wait, let's put a pop of black on this puppy and see if it makes a difference. It will. Rubbing her in there. Okay, let's see what we got there. Oh, what do you know? Look at that. Little pop of black. Pushes all that schmutz into the background. That's a technical term. You can look it up, but just trust me. Um, and that little pop of black pushes everything in the back and gives you a kind of funky, cool looking print. Do you not agree? And let's see, on the back of this one, I'll just pick up the shadows here. Do I want to do that? I'll do that. And of course, someone's texting me now. Pay no mind to that tone in the background. Say so just a little bit of stuff on there. That's why I wanted to put it on that one, because I can cover that side with something else. And I'll do a little sandwich to clean this up. And the wet side of the stencil on top of the paper. There you got your sandwich. Rub it around. Clean stencil. And this one's cooler than it looks because if you if you see catch it in the right light, see all that little bit of those PBOs remaining on the jelly plate that that black paint sucked off of there when I pulled it. So it's a little bit of added interest. And some little white journaling spots for words. Kind of instantly there. Voila! So, uh, let me set these aside. I'm going to leave my jelly plate here. I'm actually going to pull a plate up. I'm going to clean the plate. And I'm going to do it with a cleanup print. Where I just... You want to ha have this dry that's on there. That's pretty dry. That was a thin coat. Put some white or a light color on there. Brayer it on. And then I'm going to clean piece of paper on the plate on top of that. And this one, unlike a print like this where I said you wanted a light touch on the when you don't have a stencil, just the paint on the paper. This one, for a cleanup print, you got to give it a little bit more elbow grease, more pressure because you want to marry that wet paint to the dry plate, paint on the plate. Say that three times fast. And when you pull the print, it's going to almost completely clean your plate. Sometimes it does. But I said almost to give myself an out in case it screws up. So... Really a lot of pressure, and I push and rub this one a little bit longer than a normal one because I want to encourage that marriage of dry and wet paint. Hit the corners good because they'll know if you jelly if you do any jelly printing, the paint kind of after print after print kind of pulls on that little bit of an edge and gets crusty, but it looks really cool if you can get any of that to pull up. I didn't do enough prints here to give you a really good demo on the cleanup, but you'll know the process. And I'm doing a cleanup print now because I'm going to do the fabric next. And I don't want any of that black, gray, muddy color to clean up, uh, to mess up my um, my fabric print. Yep, not enough. Too soon. Cleaning up my brayer, too. Yep.
Okay, whatever it is I'm going to go with. Left a little bit, but you can see that that pretty much cleaned the plate and pulled up that shadowy design of that dumbbell pattern that I did the black in and still got a little remainder of the PBOs. You can see maybe shimmering in there a little bit. But this makes a really cool uh, background page if you just started with that. If you can visualize. Okay, so let's do my fabric. Where are you, fabric? Let's see. I'm going to kind of eyeball this fab. Oh, you know what? I better not eyeball too much because I need to do use this in the rest of the demo. So I'm going to cut this. I don't need all of this, but I want to make sure I have enough. So I'm going to give myself an extra. I believe in the article there's a dimension I give you that's recommended to cut the fabric in. It's about this big. <laughs> okay, so what do I want to put on the fabric? Let's do, um, this is a good one. Why not stick with what I love? Some teal. I'm going to put, a, whoops, put a little PBO in with you. And a little purple. I like these Liquitec Basics uh, for the jelly plate. I use those a lot. You can use any acrylic paint on here. Uh, a lot of people like and some prefer the little cheap um, craft paints you can get at Michael's for a buck when they're on sale. Uh, golden fluids will work, but do you want to use those on a jelly plate? They're pretty pricey. depends on your budget. But um, there are a couple golden colors that I'll use for certain effects, which I demonstrate in some of my other... Uh, YouTube videos that you can check out on my channel. Okay. Clean this off. Got that a little extra gooky on there. Yes, that's a word. So, oh, here's actually, see that on the picture, on the stencil? That's actually one of the, that's Golden's Copper, Thalo Blue, and that's this PBO uh, blue-green in the middle for a a certain kind of a gradient print that I do. So, another stencil. Now, the we're going to have to jelly print more than just the 8x10, so we have enough of the page to go around and fold into the cover of the journal. So I'm going to kind of print more than I really need, so I have choices of what I like better and can use that bits of the fabric. So I'm going to start out there. Why not? And fabric is kind of easy to print because you can actually see what's happening. It's not working. I like to use my fingers better. I try the brayer every once in a while, but I always go back to using my fingers. Right, pull that print. Oh, and drop it on itself in the demo. And there's one layer. And I'm not going to do a ghost because in the fabric it's not going to show up that well. I'm going to pull this off and I'm going to do the reverse somewhere on the other side. You don't have to always be exactly symmetrical because this is going to this is going to be overlapped and on several different designs to cover this piece of fabric. Pull that one. There's that one. Um, and this I'm just going to do this to try to make a sort of a sandwich there to give me a, something to clean my stencil on as well as pick up a little bit of the stuff off the jelly plate. Yeah, that's pretty good. I'll use that for a page in there. And I got that much off the plate, which you wouldn't, you know, by looking at it, you wouldn't have thought it was there. But it's there. Get some strings off of there. And now let's do 
Uh, I don't know. Let's go back to this other mix of colors, maybe. Yep, that was a lot of yellow. This and this. Oops. And this time I'm not going to put on as much paint because I'm, I don't need that extra print like I was doing on the paper. It's just kind of me thinking out loud. Hopefully I don't confuse you. I confuse myself sometimes, so it's highly possible it can happen. Okay, clean my brayer. And let's do some sort of different pattern. Let's use this one. This one's kind of cool. And I'm going to just kind of overlap here. design there. I'll print this maybe down this end. Has less going on than the other end. So I'll put that right there. Ooh, I don't like what that did at all. And see, you can flub it up. But I'll show you how to save it. That was just a little too it's not distinct. You can't to kind of like blurred out the pattern to my eye. But that pop of black will bring her back. Oh, made a little rhyme. So, clean this up. Get the wet part of my stencil down there. aside to dry and let's do uh, different color in here a little bit and maybe a little bit of the blue PBO this is one of my favorites this one's green blue and it looks there is one also called blue green they look very much alike in the tube, but when you use them, you'll see that one is green paint, paint with blue shimmer and blue paint with green shimmer. And they do look different. Now this will make good collage fodder. So hang on to that when you do, you know, punch some of this piece or tear off a little piece down here. You can get some really cool uh, pieces out of that. So I save those. That one's getting a little too built up. I'm going to clean the edges of my brayer. Sometimes they get a little gunked up. Okay. This might not be a great contrast on here, but we're going to try it anyway. Try that. And I'm going to go a little bit wider. Oh no, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to go over the middle in yellow, where I did the yellow, and hit this design with that. That might look okay. There you go. I'm going to pull this up. And maybe print on this end of this one and get it right to the edge. Yep. Schmutzing it up even more. <laughs> clean the plate, clean the stencil. Ooh, that was a lot of paint on there. And not so much there, but still enough to pull off of there. All right, let's do um, something a little more graphic. And let me grab a different color. We need to get some kind of other brighter color in here, I believe, to bring this back from the edge. So what's brighter than fluorescent pink? 
nothing. <laughs> Let's throw a little bit of this in there. This will really either look cool or going to really not. <laughs> but for demonstration purposes, I'm going to keep going with whatever wherever this ends up. Not everything you touch is always perfection, but you'll get the idea of what I'm doing here. And let's use this one. This is a fun one. And let's try that over this end and see where we get. help that give that a little bit more of a defined design. You know what? I think I'm going to go over the top of the whole thing with those colors. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to leave... Let me silence my phone. We seem to be having a, a lot of action on here. Um, I'm going to leave my stencil wet for now. And I'm just going to add to this on the plate with the same colors. Because I want to do three prints in a row to try to cover all the way across with that hot pink. I think that did add a little something to pull that pull that back to a more interesting design. The lesson here may be to not do the pickup print when the pattern that's under the stencil that's laying on your plate that I usually do the sandwich on. It's probably not the way to go on the cover because you're going to have one shot at the cover. And you want that a little more crisp than some of the prints, if that makes sense. All right, so now let's go. Kind of hard to see through this thing. But I kind of like bunch up the fabric. It's kind of almost dry. Find out where that edge is that I want to lay down here. And you kind of eyeball it. it does, it's never going to be exact, and that's okay. I'm not a machine, people. <laughs> See, even got a little crease in there. It's just going to add a little interesting texture. Or that's what we're going to call it. Yeah. See, that's, that's going to help pick it up. So I'm going to do one more of those over top of this blue, leaving it wet again. And I don't have to put down as much paint because it's going to mix in with what's left underneath the stencil there each time. All right. Stencil down again. And this time I'm going to go from the opposite end of the fabric. And I'm going to go all the way to the edge of this paper, I mean, edge of this fabric on this end. It's kind of cool that you can see it come through the fabric and know you're actually getting a good impression. That's a little more interesting. And I think what I'm going to do is find a place to put this for one. I'm going to uh, do a sandwich on this one. That's a lot of paint on there now. I actually might do one clean print like this. Oh, that's cool. And I forgot about that because I don't use fabric that much. Let's see if you can see the texture of the fabric in the paint where you see that weave. That's pretty cool. It looks pretty nice. So now I'm going to do another sandwich because I had so much paint on there and such a wet stencil. This one has a lot of little corners and peaks that you could gouge your finger or bend the stencil. So this one I kind of pat instead of rub on. Yeah, see how bright that is? That was a lot of paint on there. And 
another cleanup on there. So they both came out pretty cool. So now let's use the Papa Black theory on top of this um, and see what I can save on there. When I say save, I use the term loosely because, I mean, it's, maybe we can try this one and just do multiple prints of that. It just, it does, it's not my favorite that I've ever done. Um, might be after I add the black, I don't know. But that's just the way it happens. It's a very serendipitous process. You can kind of know what you're going to get, but unless you're really, um, you know, the, the combinations that you put down, you got an idea, but in most cases, it's kind of a surprise what comes off of there. So I'm going to center this one on the plate. I'm going to go back and I'm going to print multiple ones of these. Um, hang on, thinking. Okay, I'm good. <laughs> hey. And I'm pushing in the direction of those rays, kind of from the sun sort of thing, coming out of there. Try to get a little hint on everything. And in the center, there's round ones. And let's see if that improves anything. Ooh, yeah, that's pretty cool. See that little pop of black? Saves the day again. <laughs> so now I'm going to do another one. Again, wet, leaving the paint wet on here, adding a little bit more paint. Find my brayer, get that down. Wet side down again. And I'm gonna turn it a little bit. Well, that kind of doesn't make any sense because it's the same way all the way around, isn't it? Hello. Close enough. Another one and more black. And let's try to get this other end. It's kind of a mishmash of not my favorite stuff, but it's there, so we're going to see what we can do with it. I'm trying to go opposite and so I don't smush up the fabric and drag it. Try to pull apart and get in those lines since it's kind of symmetrical. Okay, that's getting a little bit better. Now let me see, just for giggles, where we are size-wise. Okay, I'm probably going to be a little bit short on the inside cover. But again, for demonstration purposes, what I would do, if I wanted to take the time, I would print more, uh, a wide cover, more width on this, um, on this fabric. So I had enough when I fold it around the folder to have print, ensure a print on this inside edge of the fabric all the way around. All right, so you just want to make sure when you measure and follow directions in the article, it'll show, it'll tell you exactly how much you need to cover to uh, accomplish that. But for this, I'm going to run with this and assume that's going to work for a demo. And clean this up.
sandwich there, wet stencil here. Clean up print to get this off of there. Okay. And then after this, I'm just going to set this to the side and I'll do the fine cleaning up of it later. Watch when you're doing these edges. It's really easy to give yourself a paper cut. Huh, how do I know that? View of my prints, if you look closely, may have a little drop of blood in there. Just kidding, just kidding. Oop, not near enough. Too wet, too wet. That was just too wet altogether. But got some texture off of there, a shadow of that star uh, print, the Outback print. Try another one, get this up off of there. And then I'm gonna put this off to the side and we'll start uh, with shaping the folder, getting the folder cut down to size. There we go, that's the one I was looking for. <laughs> Okay, I'll be back. <laughs> 